Good morning. We're glad you're here with us this morning, whether you're in person or online. If you would, stand with us. We're going to sing praises to our King.
our peace is in Jesus Christ. It starts when we confess our sins and we make him our Lord and Savior. Let's sing this song to him. Father, in this place right now, Lord, fill us with joy and peace, for only you can sustain us. Have your way in us today, Lord. We thank you so much for your love. We thank you for how you have blessed us beyond measure. Today, Lord, help us to open our ears to you and what you want to do in this place. We pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Let's watch the screens. Did I just turn it on? I just turned it on. All right, let's try that again. Good morning. All right, we're so glad you're here with us this morning. Uh, whether it's in person or maybe those of you watching at home online or later in this week, uh, we're just excited to be able to gather and worship in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you're a first-time guest with us, we'd love to get to know you. Let us know you're here, whether it's, again, online or in-house. Uh, my name is Brian Otney. I am the associate pastor here uh, at Bluff Creek, and I'd love to have an opportunity to get to know uh, those of you who, whom I haven't had the opportunity 
to know just yet. So let me ask you this question this morning, and this, this might be news to some of you, but there's a holiday coming up. Does everybody know that? Who, who out there is ready for some turkey? Show of hands. Who's ready for some turkey? Yeah? Okay. So let me ask you this one. Now answer carefully. Answer carefully, all right? Who's ready for some family time? Okay, not as many hands as the turkey. Okay, so I kind of suspected that that might be the case. I think that that happens a lot this time of the year. Um, I've heard uh, holidays referred to as family fun time, and I think I've heard them referred to as forced family fun time. Anybody can relate to that maybe at some instance in your life? I, I really hope, and of course I'm, I'm kidding around, right, although there's a serious undertone to that, I really hope that your family time this holiday season doesn't feel forced and that you can enjoy and be thankful for that. Because today we're going to try to talk about or maybe just maybe scratch the surface of what it might look like to be a thankful person, right? And it's all the glory uh, to God. Uh, sometimes during the holiday season, I know a lot of us, we feel like that there's just nothing that's within our control, right? Nothing's within our control, perhaps, especially if we're maybe the younger sibling or, or, if, or if, our, if our parents still kind of, you know, dictate the things that go on during the holidays. And I think you all know that the holidays can get pretty crazy, right? I mean, with traveling, especially if your family uh, is all over the, the United States, maybe not just all in one state, the traveling can get crazy, um, everything can get kind of nutty. But I wanted to kind of just maybe give a reminder this morning as we're approaching the, the, the beginning of, of the real holiday season, as, as some uh, might, might say or put it. And that warning is this is that although there might be a lot of things out of your control, for example, like where you go and, and, and maybe who comes to, to, to your family gatherings and those kinds of things, but I want to remind you that there is one thing, at least one thing, that you might be able to be in control of, and that is your attitude, right? Does that sound like crazy talk to some of you? Your attitude might be the only thing, if nothing else, that, that you can control um, this holiday season, and I want to tell you that as believers in Jesus, right, our attitude is to reflect him, right? Our attitude is to reflect Jesus in all the things that we say and all the things that we do, especially when we're gathered around maybe with our family. So we're called to have an attitude that reflects Jesus, and also, hopefully, as we step into this not just this holiday season, but hopefully we're stepping maybe into, if we're not already, you know, this type of person, into a person that is a thankful person, into a spirit of thankfulness, you might even add. And I want to put it in these three simple words. Go ahead and throw it up on the screen to remind you that your attitude, it's on you. That might be a hard pill for some of us to swallow, right? It's on you. And, I, and just so you know, I even underlined it just to show the importance. Does that help for anybody? Okay, so it's on you. Your attitude is on you. I want you to know that this morning. It's on you to choose that attitude, not to allow others to dictate it for you, right? It's on you to step into a spirit of thankfulness. It's on you to choose joy, right, and not allow the hurtful actions or maybe words or cold shoulder from family members to affect you or friends to affect you or change your attitude. But not to be defined by the people who are around, but to remember to be defined by who God says you are. Amen? It's on you to build up God's kingdom. It's on you and me as well. Not to tear it down with harsh words or, again, cold shoulders and as we mentioned, the holiday season, the tensions are high with all the traveling and all the different things. And it might even be higher this year in your life than it ever has been before with COVID and, and maybe the, the lack of, of being able to see family members. But again, I want you to, to, to know this, and I want you to say it with me on three. Ready? One, two, three. It's on you. Amen? All right. Well, culturally speaking, I think we could probably agree, most of us anyway, that we're typically kind of led to believe, and maybe it's just a, an American culture thing, I don't know, but we're led to kind of believe or think that the holidays are just all about family. That's what it's about. It's just family, right? It's just about family gatherings. It's just about spending time with our family or being together uh, with them. Maybe for you, if, if you don't have a, a big family or you're single or what have you, maybe for you the holidays uh, is about something different. Maybe it's about just being off work that day or watching football or something like that. Maybe you do a, a Thanksgiving 5K every year, and that's what Thanksgiving maybe is about for you. Or perhaps you're like a really good cook, right? Maybe Thanksgiving is your time to shine. 
right? Like you make the best turkey, or maybe it's your, the stuffing, and I don't know, some kind of dessert. Maybe it's your time to shine with, with, with your excellent cooking skills, right? You might bring the best side dish to the family gathering, and it just blows everybody's socks off, right? The best apple pie, maybe, something like that. I think that these holidays, these, these, these events, if you will, I think we also sometimes, uh, and I know I've been guilty of this too, I think we make them about us, don't we? We make them about us sometimes. It, it maybe it, it can look a lot of different ways, right? Maybe sometimes we spend um, time just, just in sorrow and in pain for somebody we lost, right? And, or maybe, maybe that, that are, we're so consumed with that that we miss opportunities to love on the people that we are around, or perhaps we're mad, and, and some of you might be able to relate to this right now. The conversations have already been happening. Maybe we're mad because this year we don't get to celebrate at our house. We've got to go to a relative's or something like that, right? I know, I know that sounds silly, but, but it happens, and you know it, you, you, you know it does. Really, there's, I think, so many different reasons that, or maybe even different things that we make the holidays about. We could probably go on and on with examples. You've probably got your own examples even that I haven't thought of. But ultimately, these types of days, these types of holidays, these types of events are about, check it out, this is what they're really about. They're about what you make them about. They're about what your priority is during that time. Did you know that? Does that sound crazy? If, if, if not, maybe in, in at least your medium, immediate family or, or may, at the very minimum, at least in your own life, you get to, you get to kind of set that narrative for you. What is this holiday season going to be about? What's my attitude going to be and who's it going to reflect? Am I going to set an example for those people around me? What am I going to decide that it's about this year? Again, that might sound crazy to some of you. Some of you are like, I don't get to choose. You haven't met my in-laws, right? Anybody relate to that? Or, or but my brother, my brother's going to be there. My sister's going to be there. Like, I don't get to choose when they show up. I have to just fall into to, to place and be who I am when they're around. But the truth is that you get to choose joy and you get to choose thankfulness. And I know it's not as easy as just that line. Okay, so don't hear that. But you get the opportunity each and every day when you wake up, when you open your eyes to choose joy or at the very minimum begin the very first steps of that joy journey. And we all start in different places, okay? We've all got our own obstacles. Some are really big and some maybe really small. But we also all serve the same God. We all serve the same big, great, big, and powerful God. A God of grace and a God, <clears throat> excuse me, of mercy and a God of love. And if nothing else, that's something that we can start our joy journey. We can start being thankful with that. If nothing else in your life... You can start there and see what God does and how he builds on that. So this week, I asked a couple people in our church um, about just what are they thankful for, right? And so like, what, 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 I just said, hey, what are you thankful for? And, and the, the, first, the first video we're going to play in just a second are, are, are a, a small group of our teens, or a group rather of our teens, just sharing what they're thankful for. And our, the teens that are here don't know this is going to happen, but they're going to be on the screen in a second. So Neil, go ahead and play that video. Let's see what they're I'm thankful for. I'm thankful for my friends and family and for a warm house to stay in. Yeah. <laughs> Dylan? Um, I'm thankful for the fact that none of my family has gotten COVID and everyone in my family has been relatively healthy. Cool. Very cool. Connor? I'm very thankful for my whole family being very healthy and the fact that we are safe during these very weird times. <laughs> Eli? Um, I'm thankful for my family and that they uh, have all been okay. Good. Mitch? I'm thankful that I did, as far as I know currently, I didn't give anybody Corona. Mm. Austin? Uh, I'm thankful that, yeah, same as Mitchell, that I didn't get it or give it to anyone. And I unlocked the RPG in Modern Warfare. <laughs> kind of nice with it. <laughs> Taylor? Um, I'm, I'm thankful that I'm able to connect with my friends, even though we're all stuck at home. Yeah. So, Logan, what you got? Um, oh, sorry, driving. Um, I'm thankful for my, my friends, my family, my football team that I've been around, and just the safety of everyone else that has been around me. Good. Harrison? I'm thankful for the support and, like, 
the people who helped me with my schoolwork. All right, Sadie, snapshot. What are you most thankful for? That's really. Funny. In case you didn't hear, she said, "Because I have a mask on and I can stick my tongue out at you." So you can always count on the children's pastor for a real heartfelt, deep answer. I'm thankful for that. And I'm going to clarify: Logan wasn't driving; he was sitting in the car in a parking lot. It was not moving while we were recording that. I wouldn't have went for that. Um, but I want to ask you this: as you see, kind of what some of the students might be thankful for, and I thought it was really cool that they were all talking about their family and their like the support system. Um, but anyway, something that you might ask yourself this morning is, what are you thankful for? If you were to answer the question right here, right now, in the middle of whatever you're going through, what are you thankful for? Can you even see what you're thankful for in the midst of everything that's going on? I'm sure that if we were to ask each one of you, it would be a variety of things. You might just write it down in your notes, what you're thankful for. It would be a variety of things that you might answer or you might respond. And again, it, it might be really difficult for you to answer that question right now. You might be having a hard time going, you know what, I... I really don't know what I'm thankful for. I, I really having a hard time answering that question. And that's okay, but it's a place to start asking the question and start moving our feet and looking toward God. Let's, let's jump into the book of Colossians real quick in chapter 2. We're going to read verses 6 and 7 if you'd follow along with me. Um, if you have an electronic device in the Bible app, uh, you can follow along in our digital bulletin if you're at home watching. But if not, just check out the words here on the screen. It reads this, And now, just as you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down into him. Let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong in the truth you were taught. And check this last part out. And you will overflow, say it with me, with thankfulness. Overflowing with thankfulness. I want to tell you this morning, this will be uh, your next note to, to jot down if you're a note taker. And it's this, thankfulness. Thankfulness starts in a relationship with Jesus. Thankfulness starts in a relationship with Jesus. Paul's writing to these, these folks here in the book of Colossians, and he's kind of warning them against their, their you know, uh, to guard their faith, right? To kind of hold that, um, you know, protect that, their, their faith. Uh, guarded against false teaching, guarded against uh, the sinful natures uh, of the world. In fact, he even urges them, as we just read, to plant their roots in God. Plant their roots in truth. And then after you plant your roots there, then begin building on that truth. Doesn't that sound interesting? Because this, 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 this process that Paul kind of lays out here really simply is an avenue to true thankfulness. Paul even says, like we read together, that you'll then overflow with thankfulness. Doesn't that sound great? The battle with thankfulness, what we're talking about this morning, it might begin by first doing something a little different for some of us. It might first begin with putting to rest some of the lies that we tell ourselves or that are maybe told to us. Did you know that one of the biggest barriers between you and a thankful spirit are the lies from Satan? So we asked a couple people, what are some of the biggest lies that you tell yourself that steal your thankfulness. Go ahead and play that next clip. The challenging part is blocking out the negative mm. thoughts and stuff, especially like over criticisms of like oneself or others. Sure. Would be um, that I'm not, I'm not good at anything, mm. or I'm not, I'm not enough. Mm. I don't do enough. Yeah. What's how, how do you get how do you come out of that? Um, remind myself that not everything has to be perfect. Mm. And, you know, I'm a human, and I make mistakes. Good. Somebody listening right now might, might need to, to begin their journey to thankfulness, to, 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 to first step into that spirit of thankfulness by, by breaking the cycle of the lies and deception that fill our hearts and our mind. The lies that come from Satan that tell us that, that, that you know, we're not loved and that, and that God isn't there and all these different things. And he, he doesn't care and love for you with great passion and, and joy. You know, one of the biggest lies I think that we tell ourselves, and I've been guilty of this as well, is that we have no reason to be thankful at all, right? That we should continue to compare ourselves to other people. Uh, we should continue to count what they have and envy what they have or, or beat ourselves up because we're not like them, which, which we know if you've ever kind of been in that mode, it, it starts to really push you down further and further, and, and, and it draws the distance between us and God that much greater. 
See, Satan exists in this world. i got to tell you the truth this morning. Satan ex- exists in this world for the purposes of destroying. Destroying. And i, I be honest, and you know this probably, it's, really, it's different for all of us, right? Satan might t- attack some of us through, through addiction. Satan might attack some of us through our emotions. He might attack some of us through pride or, or arrogance, right? And, and, and we talked about this a few weeks where we said, God knows what we need. And as true as that is, as true as it is that God knows what we need, Satan knows what our sinful nature wants. And he preys on that. He preys on those things in our lives. And so we may ask ourselves today, which one of those voices is the loudest in my ear? Right? You know, the little old character thing with the devil on one shoulder and the angel on the other, like that, that kind of visual picture there. Which one's louder in my ear? The lies of Satan or the truth from God our Father? I think a, a thankful spirit for a lot of us is probably a daily battle, a daily battle that we're fighting every single day. And I want to encourage you this morning and tell you that it is definitely a battle that's worth fighting. If you've ever had a, a, a taste, even if it's just a small taste of joy or that thankful spirit, you maybe just had a moment where you you've, you've felt that, then you know that it's true. You know that it's a battle worth fighting. In Paul's letter to the people of Philippi, he writes these words in Philippians 4, uh, chapter 4, verse 4. He says, always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again and say it with me. Rejoice, rejoice. Paul's trying to, 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 to encourage or, or maybe motivate, right, a persecuted people group to find joy and thankfulness even in the midst of their great trials. I want to give you some, uh, I'm not like a big fact person or even a big, you know, study person for that matter, to be honest with you, but I want to show you something, or I want to tell you something rather, about a thankful spirit, things that, that it can produce in our life, a number, a number of different things that, can, that it can produce uh, in our lives. But believe it or not, an attitude of thankfulness affects nearly every aspect of our lives. So let's, let's kind of go through this and check it out. So thankfulness, believe it or not, improves our physical health. Well, thankful people, studies show, thankful people are more likely to take care of their health as well as, something I'm really bad about, routinely visiting the doctor. Thankful people tend to do that more. Thankfulness improves our sleep. And before you turn your ears off, studies from the the, uh, University of Manchester in England show that a person who practices thankfulness throughout their day, even those with sleep disorders included in this study, doze off faster sleep longer, and sleep better. Isn't that crazy? Thankfulness improves our self-esteem. Studies show that thankfulness can remove, a spirit of thankfulness can remove the curse of comparison. So rather than being resentful toward others and what they have and envying that, you're able to, with a spirit of thankfulness, look at that person or those people and celebrate with them the successes of their life. Thankfulness brings contentment. Thankfulness opens a, a door to contentment by allowing us to direct our focus toward the positive things that surround us, as opposed to constantly dwelling on the negative. Any really honest people in here, negative dwellers, I can be that sometimes. I'm looking at the negative a lot. It's easy to do. These are just a few examples of how a spirit of thankfulness can really transform our life on a daily basis and then shift our focus to what really matters. I think we can probably all agree, if, you know, and it's not really an, an agreeing time in our country, but I think we can all agree that, that we like joy. Joy is fun. Does anybody in here say joy is not fun? Because we need to have to talk afterward. But joy is fun. I think we can agree on that, right? I don't think you've ever seen anybody being happy and miserable all at the same time. It's just not that common. Maybe it happens, right? You see somebody laughing, you don't generally have to ask them, hey, how are you doing? Because they're laughing. It's kind of written all over their face. They're doing okay, at least for that moment anyway. That they're doing all right. Joy, like COVID, is contagious. Laughter, like COVID, is contagious. But these are good things that are contagious, right? I want you to know that real and lasting joy comes from having a thankful attitude. And we've got so much to be thankful for in a relationship with Jesus. Let's take an example. So this week, I want to show you an example. I posted on, on Facebook, and people that responded, they're about to find out. But I posted on Facebook, I asked the question, what's something that made you laugh out loud, right? Like I was just looking for something joyful that day. And so we got a few responses. And some of you were like, oh my gosh, I would have never responded if I'd have known it was going to be up here. So Shane posted this, this funny joke that popped up on his screen. 
how do crazy people go through the forest? They take the psychopath. That makes sense, right? Lisa Campbell, she said her grandbaby learned how to stick out her tongue. Now, I want to point out to you that our children's pastor likes to stick her tongue out, and this is a child, so I don't know if that's connected. But anyway, you can decide for yourself. The Matura family, their baby fell asleep sitting up. I think if you have kids and you've seen that, it's kind of cool. Let's check out the next one. My mom still hasn't told me, so I don't even know what this is all about. A girl I went to high school with, uh, she was walking her dog and tripped, and her neighbor laughed at her, and she thought the appropriate response would be to go ahead and laugh with them, right? Because she made a mistake. Okay, it happens. Let's have some joy. Now, this is the one I'm a little concerned about. Candy Hash just said Dennis. And if you guys don't know this, Dennis, one of our elders here, he does not have social media. So I didn't know that until this morning, Candy. I'm sorry. Now he knows what you said. Um, a friend of mine, uh, Brandy, she said uh, she sent like a thumbs up in a response to a text message. And she must have just been holding it down because the thumb, it just kept growing and getting bigger. And we got this big blue thumb. And it was, I mean, he had to be there, I guess. But it was funny, right? And Sandy Gayheimer's just having joy watching her cats chase around their little toy mouse. And so I wonder if you could ask yourself, what's something that made you laugh out loud recently? I got some inappropriate answers I wasn't allowed to share with you this morning. But sometimes the things that just make us laugh out loud and bring us joy. Again, I bet you can, you can point to something um, that, that, that was a joyful moment. And I think that, I know it's true for me, we have a tendency to kind of cherish those moments that really make us laugh or really make us smile, right? Those joyful moment, moments in our life. I want to offer you a, a challenge this morning. And you don't have to be necessarily a tech person. You can use pen and paper. That's always good. But if, if, you're, if, you're, if you know how to record a video on your phone, this is the challenge I have for you. Or maybe if you have a you know, a kid or grandkid that can record it for you, go for it, okay? But, but give, it, give it a go. Take your phone out, right? Record yourself just talking about something that, that you laughed about recently. Just record yourself telling yourself a story, something that made you laugh, right? You might realize it really wasn't all that funny after you tell yourself back. That happens to me. But record it. Record it and save it and play it for yourself a few weeks down the road or maybe be really bold and post it on social media and share some joy around with other people people, right? Just something fun to do to lift up spirits. You might take that challenge maybe. I want to I say this really quickly because we've talked about this joy aspect and this thankfulness and, and, all, and we've used the word feeling even in this conversation so far and I want to be really clear about something, okay? That we're not talking about a, a, a temporary feeling of joy. We're not talking about even pursuing a temporary feeling of joy and really we're not talking about feelings really at all, really, but we're talking about a spirit of thankfulness this morning that then leads to these types of moments of joy. And, and I got to tell you that, these, the, that this whole point of this, the whole process of the spirit of thankfulness that leads us into this life of joy has purpose, and it's so that we can share that joy, so that we can share the love of Jesus with those people around us. And man, what an opportunity we have with the holiday season to do that. One of my favorite songs out right now, the lyrics in the song go like this. It says, I'm done chasing feelings, spirit lead me. It's just a powerful, powerful line in that song that really kind of changed my heart. I think it's, it's, it's also good to note that when we move into something new, so if you're maybe making that transition today into something new and different, into a spirit of thankfulness, right? Maybe you're going to move from the Grinch to Santa Claus today in some fashion, right? When we do that, it's good to reflect on where we came from, right? Not to dwell, but to reflect on where we came from. It's good to maybe take note of lessons that we, that we maybe learned in the past, and maybe we can use those lessons as tools in the future, not just for us, but for other people in our lives and even younger generations to share or inspire those around us. Have you ever said this to yourself, man, I wish I could go back and do that again? Anybody guilty of that? We got a lot of people lying in here this morning. I got to tell you, Any, I know everybody said it. I'm not. I don't even need your response. But we, we, you know, I, man, I wish I could go back and redo that, man. I, I would have handled it so much better, or I would have handled it so much differently than I did. Or maybe this one, right? If I could just be a kid again, I would just redo like that whole section of life that went wrong, right? You ever had those thoughts? Or maybe you're like me and you've actually played out the scenarios, right? Yeah, a whole other level of, of nutty. I, I think it's pretty common do that though. I think we all do it and it's pretty common. It's kind of in our nature maybe to think like this. And again, like I mentioned, it can be helpful. It can be beneficial uh, to have some of these insights into our past or into our lives of some of the things that we do. Um, you know, to again, not to repeat, uh, to, to avoid repeating past mistakes or to pass on to a younger generation our errors so that they might learn. 
You might maybe, maybe in your life, and this, might be, this has kind of been, hits home for me, you've got a relative that's passed away and you think to yourself, man, if I could just go back and really tell them how much I really loved them, like really tell them, like more often, how much I really cared about them and how much they really meant to me and how, how I appreciate their guidance. I'd give anything just to be able to show them my appreciation. Have you ever been there before? I think we, we recognize the moments that we are able to, 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 to have or share a thankful spirit after they've long passed. Unfortunately, I think that's true. I think in the moments, a lot of times, and I can I only speak for me, and I know it's true for me, that we may not realize what's happening or the weight of certain uh, advice or certain conversations as it's taking place as we realize when it's taken away, when it's gone. We, we begin to realize what we had as opposed to being thankful for what we have. Many, many folks, likely including yourself and definitely me, uh, we, we take what we have for granted, whether it's material things or money or, or, or even our very existence. The breath in our lungs, take it for granted. The old saying comes to mind, right? You don't know what you've got until it's, finish it for me, until it's gone. Earlier this week, I asked a few people this question. If you could go back and advise your younger, the yesterday version of you, what would you say? Let's check it out. Um, I'd encourage the past me to um, make more relationships sooner rather than later like I did. Mm -hmm. So that way I can, um, I feel like if you're more connected with people, that kind of helps to deconstruct some of those things. Because then, like, you can be talking with a friend and they're like, well, no, I see it as this way instead of a way that you already have your preconceived notion of yourself. Yeah. Yeah, that's really good. I would tell myself or remind myself again that not everything has to be perfect and to really count my blessings i know it's something you hear other people say or you even tell other you tell other people but to truly stop and think about everything you're blessed with and to be thankful for that yeah really good maybe not this morning but sometime this week i'd encourage you to take just a moment and, and reflect on some words of wisdom you might give a younger version or a yesterday version of you and then maybe your action step might be to pass those words of wisdom on to someone in your life, a younger person in your life or a friend or a relative. Maybe jot that on your notes today to remind yourself. If I can be transparent for just a, just a moment, I would say that the, the younger version of me, the words of wisdom that, that I could stand to hear would be keep pursuing Jesus no matter what. In the Gospel of Luke, in, in chapter 8, if you want to turn there, uh, we're going to read here in chapter 8 for a second. Jesus, he does something cool. He shows some authority that he has, and this, this authority that he, that he exercises is specifically over uh, evil and demonic forces in the world. Jesus, he, he's climbing out of the boat here as, he, as he's coming out of the, or to the shore. He cl climbs out of this boat, and he meets this man, and that's where we'll pick up in verse 26. It reads this. Whoa, I should keep it open if I'm going to read it, huh? Verse 26, it says, So they arrived in the region of Gerasene, across the lake from Galilee. As Jesus was climbing out of the boat, a man who was possessed by demons came out to him. For a long time, he had been homeless and naked, living in the tomb outside the town. As soon as he saw Jesus, he shrieked, and he fell down in front of him, and then he screamed, Why are you interfering with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? Please, I beg you, do not torture me. For Jesus had already commanded the evil spirit to come out of him. The spirit had often taken control of this man, even when he was placed under guard and put in chains and shackles. He simply broke them and rushed out into the wilderness completely under the demon's power. Jesus demanded, what is your name? Legion, he replied, for he was filled with many demons. The demon kept begging Jesus not to send him into or send them into the bottomless pit. Kind of a really crazy scene. If you haven't read it, I'd encourage you to go check out Luke chapter 8. Crazy scene. It gets even crazier if we were to continue to reading it, uh, on reading it, but Jesus, he, he casts this legion of, of uh, this demonic spirit out of this man, and it's nuts because he sends it into this herd of pigs, and then the herd of pigs go down the hill into the lake, and they drown, and then the, and the, and the demons are gone or whatever, and there's a bunch of people there, and they witness it. They see what happened, and they're like amazed at what happened, and they're a little bit upset at all the lost bacon that it had that had taken place, but they see it, and it's crazy, and it's this amazing sight, right? Something amazing just happened. The power of God over evil was present. 
And, and the, the response was interesting because the people, they were, they were really afraid. They were scared. Like they didn't understand what was going on, what had just taken place. So their default, like many of us, was just to be afraid. Like I don't get this. I don't understand. I'm scared. Fear is my way of understanding. They actually asked Jesus, they said, dude, get out of here. Get out of the city. Leave this place. We are f- afraid of you. Their fear just consumed them. But the possessed man as you can imagine, he responded a little different. He looks at Jesus and he asks him, in fact, he begs him. He says, let me go with you. Take me with you. We're going to read verse 39. And this is what Jesus says to him. He says, no, go back to your family and tell them everything God has done for you. So he went all through the town proclaiming the great things Jesus had done for him. He was just filled with joy and thankfulness for what Jesus had done for him. This man, I'm likely, I can imagine, and we see a little bit, had this strong kind of allegiance uh, toward Jesus after this moment of, of healing took place. His thankfulness just told him that he wanted nothing more to be in the presence of Jesus, to be near him and around him. He was so thankful for the healing power of Jesus. And Jesus could have, you know, he could have continued to build on to his entourage and keep having people come and, and follow him physically and, and, you know, line them up behind him, right? Create just a huge crowd if he wanted to. But Jesus knew what was most, and Jesus always knows what the most important thing is. And he knew that this man had a past. He knew this man had an ugly past, you know. He knew that, that this was something new for this man, that this man now had life. I bet this man had some advice for his younger self, no doubt, right? Probably something along the lines of how he got mixed up with these spirits in the first place. I know he had some advice for a younger version of him. He could sit in his regret even probably and and be like, man, I wish I could have done those things differently. But life's changed now. And he can go on as Jesus has instructed him to go on and tell the good news about what's happened to you, about how your life has been changed. His advice for a younger self And and the advice that you may have come up with for your younger self, again, it's really not for you. It's for others. And it's for the purposes of proclaiming the good news of Jesus to the world, to tell them what Jesus has done in your life and how he's changed you and how he can change them, how he's transformed you to being filled maybe with brokenness and despair into a person of thankfulness, a thankfulness that a lot of other people may not understand when they see it. They don't understand your joy. They might even be afraid of it, even, of what God's doing in your life. But I would encourage you to remember who it comes from, what it's about. Who it comes from and what it's about. What's the purpose of it? I think uh, just a couple more notes here real quick. Thankfulness is a testimony, or thankfulness is your testimony. I'm going a little bit over here. I'm sorry. Let's read here in Psalms 105 really quick as we start to wrap up. Give thanks to the Lord and proclaim proclaim his greatness. Let the whole world know what he has done. That's what we're called to do, to rejoice and be thankful that he, he has called you to do that. That there's no greater gift than what he has given us, and that's life, his blood on the cross, a man named Jesus, the son of God, the perfect sinless lamb, given his life for you and for me. I want you to take this last note today, and this is, I think, what it's all about, that our thankfulness glorifies God. As this week, as you might sit down with friends and family, or maybe you're not gathering physically, maybe you're going to gather virtually, so you're just going to communicate through a screen, I want you to remember that days like the Thanksgiving, like this Thursday, they're really no different than every other day in the sense that we are called to celebrate our thankfulness with each other and share the good news of Jesus Christ. Christ, that we exist to glorify God. And I'm not talking about lip service, fake persona, putting on a show for everybody around you. I'm talking about real, heartfelt, soul-bearing, vulnerable, overflowing. You just can't keep it inside any longer thankfulness toward Jesus. Amen? The more we continue to per- pursue Jesus, the more or the closer that we become to, be, to being people with a thankful spirit because it's tied in that relationship. Because to know what it means to truly be thankful, we must first truly know our Savior. The gospel, the truth of Jesus, it begins with a decision. And that might happen today for you. The thankfulness begins with a decision. A decision that we might just put our hands up high in the air and proclaim that we want to really start living for Jesus. 
We want to confess our brokenness and we want to confess our hard hearts or maybe our anger. We confess our sin and we ask for freedom in him. We ask Jesus to begin a work in us to soften our hearts so that a spirit of thankfulness can take residency. Because because we, God's people, want nothing more than to bring him glory. And it it can start, if, if 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 you want to make the decision, it can start right here right now by just saying these three simple words, thank you, God. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. Thanks for allowing us to put our past behind us. We're going to wrap up with this verse reading here in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. The worship band, go ahead and make your way out if you'd like. Peter says these words. He says, each of you must repent of your sin and turn to God and be baptized In the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of your sin, and then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Then, and only then, will real joy, real thankfulness, a life of obedience and gratitude begin. And here is the best part. It's for everybody. It's for everybody. Remember your purpose. Remember your call. And most importantly, remember that God loves you and he's calling you to him and maybe today you might answer that call let's pray jesus we're so thankful for you so today we might start something new and and that something new might be the thankful spirit that starts right here right now whether whether we're 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 listening to your word here in, in 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 this building or someone's at home listening to your word god we pray that your spirit works within us and through us and that we're able to overflow with thankfulness god Lord, be with us now as we we move into this holiday season. Help us with our attitudes, that they may reflect you in all that we say and all that we do. In Jesus' name, everybody says, if you feel the call on your life today, just respond as the Lord leads you. Let's stand. We're going to learn a new song. It's a song of remembrance great way to practice thanksgiving. I take the bread of life broken for all my sin your body crucified to make me whole again will recall the cup poured out in sacrifice to trade this sinner's end for your new covenant Sure. 
heights reach from the depths as far as he sits from the west so far your grace has carried me until i see you face to face until at last i've won my race remind me of nothing is yet Hallelujah, hallelujah, I live in remembrance. Amen. Please be seated. I want to share just a few announcements with you. Um, we're asking everybody on site today to please remain seated. Um, until an usher um, dismisses you. And, um, and uh, we'll, we'll get you out of here safely. In addition to that, we want to uh, thank you for your faithful giving each week. Um, it's, it's really uh, sustained us in, in some wonderful ways. And so there's so many ways you can give at Bluff Creek. You can go to our website and learn more information. You can just drop it in the back of the room. You could send a check or, or set up automatic uh, payments with your bank. So uh, if, if you want to see um, God's ministry sustained on this earth, then, then uh, keep giving and, and keep serving the way that you do. Hey, we're excited next week. Um, in case you didn't realize it, Thanksgiving this week, we already are starting Christmas. Can you believe it? Well, we're starting our Christmas Advent series called Christmas Playlist, and so we're going to begin that next Sunday. Great time to jump in, great time to start preparing for the Christmas season. So join us next week as we begin that. Um, we're asking everybody uh, to chip in and do the very best they can to be safe. It's so great to see people socially distancing here on site. Our employees are doing the very best that they can, our volunteers. Uh, we're asking people to 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 really practice diligence. And, and um, I, I speak from my uh, own personal experience. I, I came down with the virus in late October. I'm fully recovered, and I'm grateful to God for bringing me and my family through that. If that's you and, and you've been struggling at home, we want to know. We'd love to pray with you. We promise to practice confidentiality. But if there's anything that we can do to, to help you in your time of need, please let us know. Uh, give us a call uh, at the church. So, Well, I want to pray today, and we'll be dismissed. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, Lord, you have done so much for us, Lord. You've been so good to us. And, Lord, we just want to celebrate. We want to praise you. We want to give you thanks. And, Lord, we want that to be who we are, that we would cast out all the doubt, that we'd cast out the grouchiness, the negativity that, that so easily entangles us. Lord, that we become people, new creations in your image, that we would praise you every single moment of our lives. Lord, thank you for a great message today through Brian and, and through the rest of the people that participated in the videos. Lord, let it change us this week. Sustain us with your hope and your truth. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great week, everybody.